Hello everyone, this is Emphasis on the Photo for and guys, today I'm going to be reading Judges 1 guys from the new international version, also known as NIV version. And also guys, before I want to get, go ahead and get started, I want to go ahead and say that this is a bit long, and guys, we are finally in Judges, the book of Judges. And, <laughs> yeah, we've gone a bit, and I'm just hoping that you guys were following or not, uh, following along. And yeah, anyway, let's continue, and let's get started. Judges 1, new international version, NIV, Israel fights the remaining Canaanites. After the death of Joshua, the Israelites asked the Lord, Who of us is to go up first to fight against the Canaanites? The Lord answered, Judah shall go up. I have given the land into their hands. The men of Judah then said to the Simonites, their fellow Israelites, Come up with us in, into the territory allotted to us to fight against the Canaanites. We in turn will go with you into yours. So the Simonites went with them. When Judah attacked, the Lord gave the Canaanites and Perizzites into their hands, and they struck down 10,000 men at Bezek. It was there that they found Adonai Bez Bezik and fought against him, putting to rout the Canaanites and Perizzites. Adonai Bezik fled, but they chased him and caught him and cut off his thumbs and big toes. Then Adonai Bezik said, Seventy kings with their thumbs and thumbs and big toes cut off have picked up scrapes under my table. Now God has paid me back for what I did to them. They brought him back to Jerusalem and, and he died there. The men of Judah attacked Jerusalem also. And took it, they put the city to the sword and set it on fire. After that, Judah went down to fight against the Canaanites living in the hill country, the Negev and the western foothills. They advanced against the Canaanite living in Hebron, in Hebron, formerly called Kiriath Arba, and defeated Sheshai, Amai, and Talmai, Talmai. From there, they advanced against the people living in Debir, formerly called Kiriath Sefer. And Caleb said, I will give my daughter Aksa in marriage to the man who attacks and captures Kiriath Sefer, Ot Otinio, son of Kanez, C Caleb's younger brother, took it. So Caleb gave his daughter Aksa to him in marriage. One day when she came to Othniel, Ot Othniel, she urged him to ask her father for a field. When she got out of her donkey, Caleb asked her, What can I do for you? She replied, Do me a special favor. Conceal of giving me a land in the Negev, give me also springs of water. So Caleb gave her the upper and lower springs. The descendants of Moses' father-in-law, the Kenite, Went up from city, the city of Palms, yeah, Palms, with the people of Judah to live among the inhabitants of the desert of Judah and the in the Negev near Arad. Then the men of Judah went with the Simonites, their fellow Israelites, and attacked the Canaanites, living in Zephaf, and they totally destroyed the city. Therefore, it was called Horma. Judah also took Gaza, Ashkelon, and Ekron, each city with its territory. The Lord was with the men of Judah. They took possession of the hill country, but they were unable to drive the people from the plains because they had chariots fitted with iron. As Moses had promised, Hebron was given to Caleb, who drove from it the three sons of Anak. The Benjamites, however, did not drive out the Jebusites, who are living in Jerusalem to this day. The Jebusites live there with the Benjamites. Now the tribes of Joseph attacked Bethel, and the Lord was with them when they sent men to spy out Bethel, formerly called Luz. The spies saw a man coming out of the city, and they said to him, "Show us how to get into the city, and we will show, and, and we will see that you are treated well." So he showed them, and they put the city to the sword, but spared the man and his whole family. He then went to the land of the Hittites, where he built a city and called it Luz, which is its name to this day. But Manasseh did not drive out the people of Beth, Beth Shan or Tanakh or Dor or Ibelim or Megiddo. And their surrounding settlements where the Canaanites were determined to live in that land. When the Israel became strong, they pressed the Canaanites into forced labor, but never drove them out completely. Nor did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites living in Gezer, but the Canaanites continued to live there among them. Neither did Zebulun drive out the Canaanites living in, in Kitron or Noharalal. So these Canaanites were living among them, but Zebulun did subject them to forced labor, nor did Asher drive out these living in Akar, Ako or Sidon, or Alab, or Ale Lab, or Akzib, or Helba, or Afek, or Rehob. The Asherites lived among the Canaanite inhabitants of the land because they did not drive them out. Neither did Naphtali drive out these, those living in Beth Shemesh, or Beth Anaf, but the Naphtali should live, too lived among the, the Canaanite inhabitants of the land, and those living in Beth Shemesh and Beth Anaf became forced laborers for them. The Amorites confined the Danites to the hill country, not allowing them to come down to the plain, and the Amorites were determined also to hold down the in Mount 
here's Ajolan and Shalvim. But when the power of the tribes of Joseph increased, they too were pressed into forced labor. The boundary of the Amites was from Scorpion Pass to Sela and beyond. Well, guys, I know that that one was pretty long, I guess. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to click that like button. You guys, if I mispronounce any of these words, I hope. I'm sorry about that. But anyway, guys, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.